What's up guys, today I'm taking a step back just like my Ningguang build guide to take a look at another character who I built a while ago and wanted to revisit. Today's topic is Xin Yan, who is one of my first dedicated main DPS characters. Although she may have been a main DPS for me in the past, I've moved on and also recently switched her over to a more supportive slash quick swap role and she definitely has not been disappointing in the slightest. At C2 or above, burst support Xin Yan is probably one of the easiest characters to build in terms of stats and today I'm going to cover exactly how you want to build Xin Yan to maximize the DPS on her elemental burst. Don't worry if you don't have C2 yet, you can definitely still build Xin Yan as a burst DPS but you'll just have to work a little harder to get the desired stats. Hopefully I'll be able to convince some people that Xin Yan is a super nice option if you want a cheap way to get damage and that aside from her C2 being extremely good, she's a pretty free to play friendly option when it comes to actually building her. Anyways, this guide will cover Xin Yan's best artifact and weapon options which includes a few new options that have come up with the recent patches to Genshin Impact. Keep in mind that today's video will only cover Xin Yan as a burst support and not a main DPS in order to keep the video short enough. Without further ado, let's get this guide rolling. As an overview of how we want to build Xin Yan, we want a lot of crit damage, physical damage bonus, attack, and energy recharge. If you're below C2, crit rate becomes a priority as well because you won't have the 100% crit rate on your elemental burst. Starting off with artifacts, this is where the bulk of new options come into play when we're talking about Xin Yan's builds as a burst support. Since I last made a Xin Yan video, she's gotten not one, not two, but three new viable sets that have opened up completely new build paths that are all very good and very interesting. For Xin Yan's best in slot for consistent damage, we have the two set Bloodstained Chivalry with the two set Pale Flame. While Pale Flame isn't really new anymore, this is the first quote unquote new set that I was talking about. Getting an extra 50% physical bonus damage is pretty much the most basic way to approach Xin Yan, but it never disappoints. If you don't have C2, definitely consider using this combination of artifacts because the next set I'm going to talk about is a set that's only really recommended with the 100% shield uptime offered by C2. For our next option, we surprisingly have the 4 set Tenacity of the Millith, which is another quote unquote new option that arrived at the same time as Pale Flame. This set is less traditional for a burst support Xin Yan, but I personally have been running this set and it has exceeded my expectations. With C2 or Sacrificial Greatsword, Xin Yan can have quite a consistent shield uptime and thus give the party a consistent 30% shield strength and a 20% attack boost. Given a little bit of investment into her shield talent plus the 30% shield strength, I've noticed that Xin Yan's shield can actually take a few hits which is really nice considering previously her shield had mostly been written off as flimsy or paper thin. However, without C2, avoid this set like the plague because not only will you fail to provide a consistent 20% attack buff to your teammates, your damage will also take a slight hit since this set does not offer physical damage bonus. For our third option, we have the very new Inazuma artifact set, the 4 set Emblem of Severed Fate. If you can get 200% energy recharge with this set, that equates to 50% elemental burst damage bonus, which is the equivalent of 50% physical damage bonus when we're calculating how much physical damage Xin Yan can do with her elemental burst. An important takeaway with this set is that you don't even need to have 200% energy recharge in every scenario. The biggest upside of this set is not that it can match the 2 bloodstain plus 2 pale flame in damage, but rather the total value that you can get out of this set. Even if you only run 60 to 80% energy recharge on Xin Yan, this set gives a bigger elemental burst damage bonus than the 2 set Noblesse, plus the 2 set effect provides a valuable stat that makes things less demanding on your artifact substats. If you're looking for the ultimate cheap build on Xin Yan, the 4 set Emblem of Severed Fate is definitely the way to go. Since I just mentioned Noblesse Oblige, the last set I want to talk about is the 4 set Noblesse, which is a very traditional build for Xin Yan. If you don't have a common Noblesse user like Chong Yun or Bennett on your team, then Xin Yan is also a decent user of the 4 set buff because her burst cooldown is only 15 seconds long. As for artifact stats, the Hourglass wants attack percent or energy recharge, while the Goblet wants physical damage bonus and the Circlet wants crit rate or crit damage. In the Hourglass slot, you should be running attack 90% of the time. The only exceptions to this rule are if you have Lithic Blade, Wolf's Gravestone, or the Unforged on Xin Yan. 
These weapons provide so much attack that it's okay to go energy recharge in the sands if you can't get enough in artifact substats. For the circlet with C2, you should always be going crit damage, but crit rate is listed for those without C2. If you lack the constellation, look to get a balanced crit ratio like any other DPS character would have. Artifact substat priority is generally just crit damage, energy recharge percent, and attack percent. Even a little bit of defense percent wouldn't hurt Shinyan if you're running something like the Tenacity of the Lilith set. Artifacts were a little bit complicated, but don't worry, weapons for Shinyan are much more straightforward. This section will list all of the viable options for a burst support Shinyan in rough order from your best options all the way down to her worst options. I want you to note that this is an extremely rough order and the best weapon for you depends entirely on your artifact situation. I sometimes like to say that the best weapon for Shinyan is the one that gives you the best balance between crit damage, attack percent, and energy recharge. Starting off with Shinyan's general best in slot, we have the Wolf's Gravestone. Not only does this weapon match her aesthetically, the passive is also extremely good for her burst support playstyle. With this weapon, we can run an energy recharge main stat in the sand slot without having to worry about losing on too much damage thanks to Wolf's Gravestone's passive. The Unforged and a High Refinement Lithic Blade are also pretty much the exact same as Wolf's Gravestone but without the support passive. So I'm going to put these two weapons right below as substitutes for the Wolf's Gravestone. For the number 2 spot, we have Skyward Pride. This weapon is best in slot for a main DPS Shinyan, but unfortunately it's not as good on burst support because we don't utilize the passive as much. However, that does not mean that you should write off this weapon because it's still wonderful even for a burst support playstyle. The high base attack and energy recharge stat makes it really easy to build Shinyan, and that's exactly what we want from our weapon. In the number 3 spot, we have Song of Broken Pines. Again, just like Skyward Pride, half of the passive goes to waste when we're not using Shinyan as a main DPS, but that doesn't really matter since the stats that this weapon provides are pretty insane. At the number 4 spot, we have our best 4 star weapon and our free to play option, the Snow Tomb Star Silver. This weapon's high base attack and physical damage bonus stat makes for a perfect weapon to use on Shinyan. Even if you rarely use the passive, Snow Tomb Star Silver will outclass Prototype Archaic in pretty much every scenario, so I won't be listing Archaic anywhere else aside from right here, since now we have a superior craftable thanks to the Dragon Spine update. As for the number 5 spot, we have the Serpent Spine. This weapon is the best option for players without C2 that need crit rate. Even if you have C2, Shinyan can keep the weapon's passive stacks up pretty much all the time since she has a shield and won't be on the field often due to her quick swap playstyle. If the stacks are managed correctly, an R5 Serpent Spine can even edge above the likes of any R1 5 star weapon in terms of damage. If you don't need crit rate but need crit damage, we have the Black Cliff Slasher in the number 6 spot. This weapon is another option that is obtainable by every player and it simply serves as a weapon for stacking crit damage when you have C2. For your best energy recharge weapon, you 100% want to use Sacrificial Greatsword. While Skyward Pride does net you more damage, Sacrificial Greatsword is the best option for pure energy generation. Not only does the passive remedy Shinyan's long ability cooldown, the passive is also really easy to activate since the pyro pulses on her level 2 shield counts as hits of your elemental skill. You may have to stay on the field for a few pulses of your shield if you have a low refinement sacrificial greatsword, but nonetheless this is everything that Shinyan could ask for in a support claymore. For your other two pure energy recharge options, we have the new Inazuma Claymore Katsuragi Kiri Nagamasa and the Favonius Greatsword. That should be all the weapons I wanted to cover, so now I'll quickly showcase my own Shinyan build. For her basic stats, you can take a look at her attack and defense right here, and if we go deeper into the stats, you can look at her crit rate, crit damage, energy recharge, and physical damage bonus. As for her weapon, I'm running an R1 Wolf's Gravestone, and as for her artifacts, as I mentioned before, I'm actually running her on the 4-set Tenacity of the Millith. If you're curious about the artifact substats, this is the Flower, the Feather, the Hourglass, the Goblet, and lastly the Headpiece. For her constellations, after a long time, I finally got my Shinyan to C6, and as for her talents, she has 8, 11, and 11. 
If you're curious about talent priority, get your elemental burst up as high as possible and then focus on your elemental skill after. I think it's very nice to get the shield talent all the way up to talent level 8 or 6 if you don't have the resources because if you want the shield to take a hit or two, it's very important to get the talent level up. That's all for my Shinyan build, so now let me talk about teams that I like to use her in while you see some gameplay of my favorite Shinyan team in the 2.0 Spiral Abyss. For Shinyan, she's in a little bit of a weird spot when it comes to teammates, but nonetheless, her high burst damage numbers have proven valuable to me in several different team compositions. The first and most common teammate that I like to pair Shinyan with is definitely going to be Eula. While you might notice that we have Pyro and Cryo together with this pair, for once we're not actually focused on Melt Reactions. This combo mainly focuses on shielding Eula while she's stacking her elemental burst and granting some physical damage bonus to Eula thanks to Shinyan's second ascension talent. This combo is already really good when Shinyan is at C0, but it gets even better once you're able to get your hands on Shinyan C4 to reduce the physical resistance of enemies. In this scenario, Shinyan works extremely well with the supportive sets like the 4-set Tenacity of the Milith and the 4-set Noblesse Oblige to buff Eula as much as possible. To finish off the dynamic duo of Eula and Shinyan, we can pair them with an Electro unit like Fischl for the Superconduct Reaction, plus another healer or shielder like Bennett, Zhongli, or Diona. If you wanted to, Eula could even be replaced for another physical damage dealer like a physical focused Rosaria. Unfortunately, outside of a Eula team, Shinyan has no obvious team role. However, she is still very flexible thanks to her high damage burst and her pyro element that can be used to finish off the pyro resonance. For example, another place that I like to use Shinyan surprisingly is a mono pyro comp with Zhongli, Shinyan, Bennett, and another pyro unit. Here, Shinyan can be either your main DPS or a burst support depending on if your last pyro unit is going to be your main DPS or not. And of course, Zhongli can be replaced with an Anemo unit with the Viridescent set just like any other mono pyro team. And with that, I've covered everything I wanted to talk about in this video. If you enjoyed this one or thought it was useful, be sure to support both the video and the channel. I know I promised a Sayu build guide, but I've been getting busy and testing her builds has been a super slow and difficult process for me, so I'm going to have to take a little more time on making a guide. But other than that, I have nothing else to say, so I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.